Hi, and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on Create and Delete Logical Volumes. So, as of the last video, we just deleted the created and delete the uh, physical volumes. So, I'll just have to re add the physical volume. So, let's just go pseudo bash as always. Okay. So let's just have a look. Yeah, we haven't got I haven't got the uh, volume group I want, so uh G create which is one and dev is one and then VG extend which is one dev is two. So because I've got two part partitions still, um I haven't bothered to just make it one disk. So I'm just I'm doing a VG create um, creating a volume group called VG1 against dev SDB1, so partition one, and then extending the volume group uh, VG1 with SDB2. So if we do VGS now, so you see two volume groups. We need the VG display as well to get a bit more context. You can see uh, the it's, uh, it's a, uh, volume group name now. You can see it's an LVM2. It's a read write. See the total size. Um, but one thing you haven't got yet is a logical volume. So if we do a LVS, we have no logical volume there at the moment. So what we need to do is do an LV create. So it's all pretty much similar. So it's LV um, as in PV, but previous. So uh, logical volume create, and then we specify the size, so it's minus L, just to specify the size, and then we can put for G for gigabytes, minus N is the name of the logical volume, so in this case we we'll just call it logical volume 1, and then you've got to specify the volume group we created earlier, so that was just VG1. And logical volume has been created. So LBS, we have a new logical volume, LB1, with the against the volume group VG1, and the logical volume size is 4 gig, as we specified. Again, it's got the LB display, like the PV commands, and we can see there, uh, where are we? Let's be up here from that. And this is the LV path here, so it's dev or it's device, VG1, volume group 1, and then logical volume 1, logical volume name, volume group name, and you've got some uh, universal uh, unique ID, uh, read writes, the creation host is available, size, amount uh, of segments, block device, etc. Cool. So, so now you've got that. You may want to perhaps extend it at some point. So you want to have uh, add an extra gigabyte to the to the disk. So it's pretty simple. So you, first thing you have to do is make sure you've got enough room on the the disk itself at the F disk level. So at the partition level, then you have to ensure um, at the um, PV uh, or physical volume level. So we've got two physical volumes, so five gig and five gig. So we've definitely got room there to potentially extend. And um, we can do VGS. We can then just check our volume groups are big enough. So our volume group is ten gigs, so we've got room there. So obviously you could add an, uh, say if you have another disk, you could add another disk into the physical volumes, and then you add an, uh, more space using the volume group commands to add the additional space to that existing volume group and then finally you would add the additional space into the logical volume so we can do LV extend because I've got plenty of room so I'm just going to add another gig so minus L capital L and then you specify can do plus 1G 1 gigabyte and then dev and you've got to give the full, uh, full path so it's dev VG1 LV1. So now the volume group size has been changed and the 
volume group is successfully resized. So now we can just do uh, LBS, and we can see the volume group size is now 5 gig. The logical volume is now, uh, you can see the logical volume there, LB1, the volume group uh, VG1, and we can see the this space allocated is now 5 gig. So perhaps you've accidentally given too much space. You can actually shrink this, the, uh, the logical volumes. So let's do LV resize minus L again, and then minus one gig, for example, and just dev gg LV one. So please know if, if you're safe using all five gigabytes and you're resizing it by taking away one gig, you're going to lose data. So you've got to be very careful when you use this command and you've got to be pretty sure you know what you're doing and also you're not going to lose um, anything from the disk. So definitely do backups before you do anything like a resize or any really disk operations. It's always a good idea to have backups of any data on those disks because you never know what will happen. So especially with a resize, it's, it's very likely you might lose uh, data. So make sure you back up. So you've got a warning as well, and we can say yes. In this case, this is compatibility. And now if we do LVS, we can see it's 4 gig again. And if we do LV display, we'll get a bit more information about it. So we've got the standard LV, LV path that is there, and we can see the LV size is 4 gig. Cool. And finally, to cover off the video, they want us to remove the logical volume. So if you've mounted it, if you've got any further than um, this current video you, and you've got the actual logical volume mounted, you will need to unmount that and that's just U mount or unmount for that. And that's then to the mount, wherever the mount point is. So MNT, I don't know, uh, logical volume one, for example. And you've used that. And there's no amount of point in my case anyway, but it would unmount the logical volume, and then you can use that to then do an LV remove, and then you specify the full path as always, g one LV1, and you want to remove the active logical volume, and then we do LV S, confirm it's gone, and LV display on the two. Just make 100% sure it's gone. Okay. Okay, that pretty much concludes the video. So the next video will be on mounting file systems um, at boot. So using the UUID, which I showed you just a few minutes ago. Or we could also use labels as well. But yeah, that's going to be the next video to come up. Uh, that, that will follow because obviously this is kind of going with, with the... Um, LVM train, so we'll just keep going with that. Eventually, we have a full up and working mount point uh, we can use to store data on. It's a it's a it's fairly complex at LVM, but you can see it's got fairly simple um, logical steps within it, and it obviously, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's quite flexible. Well, um, that concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you don't mind. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, check out my other videos on my channel. I've got uh, complete um, sections of the RHCSA uh, based on Red Hat 8. So a lot of the sections are already completed. I've been just working through the uh, exam objectives to try and cover every single um, potential exam question. So uh, yeah, please check that out and. I've got my Patreon um, on the screen here right now, so the actual link for that is um, underneath in the comments. So uh, if you would like to donate any kind of small money, you please do. Uh, they'll help pay for uh, all the all the bills. Uh, that would be awesome and appreciated. And also, uh, I've pop, pop there the information about um, Sophos, uh, who helps support uh, the page. Uh, my my yes uh, my channel. It's got uh, some information about the software antivirus 
And finally, we've got some information on Hostinger, which is a fantastic place to, you could potentially do something like uh, store your uh, a virtual machine of Red Hat to practice wherever you go. So you have a, a, a virtual um, private server uh, of VPS, you can store it in the cloud and you can pretty much practice wherever you go. And you don't need to have a fully fledged uh, computer next to you just to run virtual machines. So this can be quite quite reduced results. And again, I've stuck the links uh, in that below. So the software and hosting there. Um, yeah, thanks for checking out my video and thanks for making it as far in the video as well. Uh, much appreciated. And I'll check it, check, uh, see you at the next one. Thank you. And I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.